Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker, and congratulations on your recent yeah, election. Yeah, 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 yeah. Throughout this debate, we should not forget the fact that the terrible service on Southern Railway has had a devastating impact on hundreds of thousands of people. People have lost their jobs, people have had to quit their jobs. My constituent, Lee Fenton from Coulston, got sacked because of persistent lateness due to the poor service on Southern Railway. Parents have not been seeing their children because they couldn't get home on time. Doctors have been unable to treat their patients. Teachers have been unable to teach their pupils because of this terrible service. And as Chris Gibb found in his report, a report much called for by members opposite and by the unions, the primary cause of the problems in 2016 was the industrial action by the trade unions. Now, their claim is that driver-operated doors are unsafe. That is the nub of their contention. And yet, 30% of UK surface trains, that is 1.3 million trains a year, run perfectly safely with driver-operated doors. All of London Underground runs with driver-operated doors on far more crowded platforms. So does most of Europe. Here is what the Rail Safety Standards Board wrote in June of last year on the topic. They said there is no increased risk from properly implemented driver-operated doors that has been detected in any research we have carried out. So there is clear evidence that driver-operated doors are entirely safe. And the other sticking point with the unions is the question of whether a train can still run if the second member of staff doesn't turn up, for example, because they're sick, because they're late, or because they're on strike. Every train, by the way, which, it, which was scheduled to have two members of staff will continue to do so, but what if that second member of staff doesn't turn up? The company's position, which I think is reasonable, is that the train can still run. The union position is that it cannot. And that, of course, leads to needless cancellations. It also, Madam Deputy Speaker, means that if there is a strike by conductors, that strike is ineffective if the, tri strike, if the train can run anyway. And that, I believe, is the real reason yeah. why the RMT are so keen on this point. Now, the honourable member opposite, member for uh, Middlesbrough, the Shadow Transport spokesman, said that there had been de-staffing on this railway. Well, I would very gently point out to the honourable gentleman that, in fact, 100 extra onboard supervisors have been hired yeah. since these changes were made. So far from de-staffing, there has been an increase. There has been an increase in staffing levels. And, in fact, 98% of the trains have, in practice, run with a second person aboard. Now, Madam Deputy Speaker, I am very disappointed um, that ASLEF have instructed their members to work a four-day week because it is having devastating consequences um, for our constituents as we speak. It is completely unacceptable. There is no good safety grounds, as I've just uh, laid out, and there has been an incredibly generous financial offer made to them, a 26% pay increase from 51,000 to 63,000 for working a four-day week. There is absolutely no justification to this strike, and I call upon the honourable member opposite to prevail upon his um, friends in ASLEF to call off this uh, overtime ban at the earliest opportunity. But I would, say, I would say that we do need to train more drivers. There is no question about that. And I strongly encourage government ministers to put pressure on GTR to do exactly that. And I would also, I would also add that while this unjustified and damaging overtime strike is in place, we should make sure that the trains run ideally with eight or 12 carriages and not short formed. And I have had reports from constituents at Purley Oak Station in my constituency where um, we've had four carriage trains which does lead to overcrowding, so I would ask ministers to look at that. Now, having um, placed responsibility primarily with the trade unions, uh, Chris Gibb does, of course, go on to make a number of other points. And one of those, as um, the member for Kilmarnock mentioned, is the £300 million programme. I strongly commend the government for having found that money that was so urgently needed. Um, and the member for Kilmarnock asked what work has happened. I've got a note here sent to me by Network Rail, which I can share afterwards. Um, which lists the work that has been going on. It includes high output ballast cleaning, I'm not sure what that is, but it sounds good, and work on the Balcom and Seven Oaks Tunnels water management system. Um, further particulars are available if the Honourable Member would like to hear them. So that investment was incredibly welcome and incredibly important. Um, I'm also very excited about Control Period 6, the um, uh, major capital works programme coming up in a couple of years. 
and with the right investment between South Croydon Station and the Windmill Hill Junction, we can increase capacity on the entire Brighton Main Line by 30%. And again, I very strongly urge ministers to move that project forward. Um, I would uh, finally say um, that I think this franchise is rather too large. I understand why it was let in this form, because of the works at London Bridge and the Thameslink transformation. So I entirely understand why it was done this way. But I do think, in due course, the franchise should be um, broken down into its component parts, uh, Southern, Garrick Express, Thameslink and Great Northern, and that would allow um, for much better management. Um, but in conclusion, Madam Deputy Speaker, um, I think the behaviour of people like Sean Hoyle, who has stated that his objective is to bring down um, the government, is wholly inappropriate, and I call on the unions to end their unjustified strike action forthwith. Yeah. Yeah. Lillian Greenwood. Thank you.